Our 5.0 is getting a brand new aluminum radiator made by SVE, model number 8005A. We're just taking some precision measurements. Mm, yep, that'll fit. With the shroud out of the way, we can see where the old radiator was leaking. When replacing the radiator, it's a good idea to check the stock fan for cracks, like this one had, which we replaced a few months ago. And as you can see, we weren't too gentle getting the uh, the other hose off. That hose is less than four years old. We didn't want to cut it off, so we ended up bending the the outlet on the radiator. No big deal. I think over here is where we had our nasty leak. We kept smelling coolant for, for like must have leaked for like two years. It must not have been a bad leak until recently. And then she let loose, and that was that. So, and as y'all know, y'all are watching. You know that copper brass radiators are. Uh, pretty hard to come by these days. We had two choices. We could buy a, uh, an aftermarket plastic and aluminum, which I think looks terrible, and I'm not a big fan of plastic anything under the hood. Or we could buy this fancy SV aluminum one, and it was on sale. I think Austin got it for $200. What was the website, Austin? LMR. LMR. And so that seemed like a better idea, so that's what we went with. Okay, just panning in real quick and showing you. There's the original uh, plugs. Uh, you know for the automatic tank and this one just comes with shipping plugs so we're gonna have to reuse the plugs off the old radiator this one looks like it's milled uh, to use the radiator uh, use the fan shroud clips so we're gonna have to transfer those from the old radiator as well and there's the drain cock and it looks like you could use this if you wanted to I'm not a big fan again of plasticky stuff um, and it looks like to me it's the same fitting for that as it is for the drain cock. So we're going to reuse the old drain cock as well. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to transfer some parts over and then we're going to drop it into the car. We're just going to put a little uh, Teflon tape on here for added insurance. They usually don't leak, but when you put these on, they almost for sure don't leak. And I'm just going to go around one time. Just like that. All right. Oh, I love when that happens. Yep, and those fit like they're supposed to. And these are just tapered uh, pipe plug fittings. It's just standard, and Austin's using a 916 wrench to install both the uh, automatic uh, trans cooler plugs, and he also used the 916s to put the drain cock, or some people call it a pet cock. I just think it sounds weird to call it a pet cock. All right, so the only thing we got left to do is we're going to put the clip nuts on the top of the new radiator, and we're going to take the uh, lower fan shroud clips, which we were able to uh, harvest off the old radiator without wrecking them. Using a screwdriver and a rubber mallet is what we had to use to get these little lower clips onto the aluminum. And the aluminum is super soft. And after we hammered it on, we had to bend the aluminum back into place. This is like, this aluminum is like really soft. All right, we're just gonna drop one of those clips in. It's gonna look like that when we're done. And those go on way easier than the bottom ones did. 
We're mixing up 50-50 uh, distilled water and Supertech engine coolant. And there's a reason we use Supertech, and the reason is... It's cheap. That's right. Austin's going to take the included SVE cap off so we can fill the radiator up. Moses, that's tight. And speaking about tight, I'm just going to pan in and show you all something. We had to go in and elongate the bolt holes underneath this big flat washer because this radiator did not fit quite like the stock one. And I think we also had a problem with the, uh, I think the rubber isolator on our uh, radiator mount on the top tore. So I just took an old uh, shock absorber bushing and notched it. And we just stuck it in there as a shim for now to keep this thing from rocking into the fan. Um, over here you can see how close the uh, radiator mount uh, fits right here. We did the same thing, we elongated the holes here. And we also stuck a little piece of uh, shock absorber bushing in there as a shim. Um, not real thrilled with where they position these uh, aluminum mounts on here on the radiator and it fits really tight and we also had to basically mount the shroud up high on the radiator so this thing fits by the hair of its chinny chin chin and we really had to be careful because the uh, the fan blades were actually rubbing on the shroud when we first mounted it so they're nowhere close to rubbing now i think austin can even uh, push it on the radiator yep and they don't rub so that's fine but uh you know usual aftermarket stuff it's always uh, can be made to fit an 89 Mustang because it didn't quite exactly fit. And uh, getting some of these clips and stuff to go on this thicker aluminum was a little bit of a challenge, especially the lower, lower uh, clips for the fan shroud. But it did fit in, so I will say it's basically a drop-in replacement. And we're just going to take a sneaky peek in there before Austin fills it up. You can see that uh, circle in there within the radiator. That's the... Uh, cooler if you have an automatic transmission that's why we put the plugs on down there before and you can see that's a nice three row radiator and uh, it's beautiful the welds on it are beautiful it really is a nice looking radiator so I think I would be happy with putting this in the car instead of a plastic aluminum one um, although the plastic aluminum one on my 20 year old Maxima is original and it's never failed but the radiator on the GTO it only went 28,000 miles and the first plastic one on that one failed so you never know all right Austin fill her up Alright, we'll let it warm up for 15 minutes and then we'll check on it. Well, let's suck that down with the thermostat open. Boy, this three row is a heavy drinker. Okay, contents under pressure. Looks good. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe.